So, hello, welcome. Thanks for uh, answering some questions from oh, the you. people on YouTube. Yeah. So, would you like to introduce first yourself? Yeah, okay. So, my name is Martin Mjelmela. I work as a postdoctoral fellow at the Norwegian University of Science and Technology, where we have a research project working on the role of nuclear energy in a renewable energy system. Great. Yeah. So there's lots of people that are interested about small modular reactors, of course, yeah. since yeah. they are pretty much the future of nuclear power. Yeah. So can you say something about them, development, and when do you think we could actually have them commercially, maybe? Uh, good, uh, good question. Well, most of the, the vendors, so we have this uh, BVRX300 project going on in Ontario. The timeline is uh, they would be finished in 2028. And uh, commercially active in 2029, the first. Oh, nice. So I think that is one of the most projects that is nearest in, in timeline. Yeah. Do you plan to have commercially used SMRs in Norway sometime soon? <laughs> uh, good question. Uh, Norway has, um, uh, we've never had yeah. a commercial nuclear power plants, mm -hmm. but we were actually the sixth country in the world that had a research reactor. Okay. So we had done a lot of research uh, on nuclear energy and uh, Back in the 50s and 60s, we had this great plans of what we're going to do with the nuclear technology, powering ships and, and everything. And we're actually seeing, we're coming back to that right. now where we have ongoing projects looking into nuclear propulsion for shipping. Right. But the thing with Norway that's a bit more special compared to other parts of the world is we have hydropower in almost every fjord. Right. With that, close to that hydropower, there's some industry. So mm -hmm. we're a very dispersed uh, population. So. That also means that we, we don't have that tight grid connection. Right. So there are not many places in Norway where you can fit a large or a couple of large reactors. Mm. So. But a few small modular maybe? Yeah, maybe, <laughs> maybe. Yeah, so we, we, we even have uh, some oil and gas entrepreneurs in Norway okay. uh, that are looking into or started a company that wants to build and operate nuclear power plants mm -hmm. in Norway, mm -hmm. uh, SMRs. And uh, they're seeing to combine these together with the oil and, oil and gas refineries in, in Norway to yeah. electrify them. And uh, this would, uh, since you can co-locate, there's no need to uh, upgrade the grid yeah. as well. So you can get some additional savings as well uh, due okay. to that. So I think uh, that is perhaps one of the most uh, interesting aspects of yeah. SMRs and in Norway since we don't have that large... Uh, industrial demand in, uh, in, uh, in so you are region. planning to use in a way small modular reactors to complement the grid where you are lacking is that <coughs> that, that is that is the plan of, yeah. uh, of this uh, this company yeah. uh, it's still a bit uh, rough on the political side so yes. there there haven't been much support from from the government but According to polls, uh, nuclear energy is the most popular energy source in Norway for the moment nice. and we have uh, 51 municipalities that's gone together in this origin organization where they want to pursue uh, nuclear energy or mm -hmm. get some more information about mm -hmm. it. So, I mean, it's a, been a real grassroots movement and a lot of stuff is happening, but still lacking the, the, the top politi political support for, yeah. uh, for, for nuclear. But, um, well, look, yeah. we hope we can change that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah. thanks so much. Thanks yeah. for your time. Hello. Thank You're you. You're welcome. welcome. <laughs>
step by step yeah. in the beginning. Yeah. So that is very important. And you also have your uh, VR headset. Yeah, that's one example that's of, of mo new modern tools. Yeah. Because I think, of course, you, we will always need to have training in full-scale simulators. That's very important for an operator to be familiar with all the procedures and so on. But you can complement training with modern tools. Yeah. And maybe, maybe if I'm old, but I think that the younger generation are more familiar with new technique. Yes. They are more adjust to have training in other environments. Mm -hmm. So hopefully we will succeed yeah. with that in yeah. the future. I mean, absolutely, as a stand, it's even attractive to go and look at. So I could imagine that even in the question of attracting more young people yeah, into the yeah, field or yeah. getting a little bit uh, more interest yes, out there, yeah. even things like that yeah. are very, very interesting. Like I work in the field for quite so many years and I was fascinated to have a fuel pellet coming through me exactly. in the VR. <laughs> I saw you in the VR environment and yes. you were excited because you, you have read it theoretically yeah. and suddenly you were standing in the reactor yeah. vessel and wow, am I inside. So what we did, we engaged you yeah. Maybe we introduce to, to to something, so we can have different scenarios. We can mm. have, okay, uh, show me, and we did, we show you. In the next step, we can have teach me, we will have a, co uh, a trainer right. that will be integrated to the environment. Mm -hmm. And the third one is, okay, test me. Yeah. So it's a good way to use new technology. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. That was a very interesting perspective. Thank you. Hello everybody, once again, we are here with a very interesting person to interview. We have Christian here, do you want to introduce yourself? Uh, hi everybody, my name is Christian Rönne, I live in Malmö and I work as a visual note taker, I guess. So I draw when people speak. Yeah, so the first question is, why is he here <laughs> in a nuclear conference? Like, uh, can you tell us a little bit your experience? So how has it been here and what you have been doing throughout the yeah. conference? Uh, what I do is I help companies and organizations draw when people speak. So my job is to sit in the audience and listen to you guys talk. And then I make visual notes of what is being said. Yeah. So sort of like a visual interpreter. Like l live, live, as it happens. Yeah. So how do you do that since you don't come from like an engineering background, nuclear engineering? How was that as an experience to draw while people talk and you also have to concentrate on what they're saying, sort of understand what they're saying to even make it visual and nice and interesting. Mm. So how do you combine all of that? <laughs> um, well, it's a skill that I b basically anybody can learn because it, like it's a method where you learn uh, a, a skill set like hanging a picture or something on the wall yeah. and you learn the skill set and then you practice it a lot and then the skill is actually not the drawing part it's actually the listening part yes. uh, because you have to filter out what is being said and being a part of a nuclear conference was yeah. pretty interesting because like four days ago I knew so my interpretation of nuclear was it's you know dangerous there is Chernobyl okay. and it's it's nothing. But now, like after having been to this conference, it's just like there's a whole new world opening. So yeah. there's a whole field. There is, it's so exciting to see all the possibilities and, and listening to you know, all the speakers and, and see the potential. So That's great. That's yeah. great. So can you show us something? You have something um, on your... Is this one of the, the speakers, right? Oh, that was the yeah, panel. This was the panel that you were on. Right, I was there. Yeah. So, so one of the things that was up there was like, um, and this is the power of using visuals, is that you can take the visual because you get like an anchor that um, coordinates or embraces your left and your right side of your brain. Yeah. So everybody thinks in images, right? So if I say the Eiffel Tower or if I say uh, uh, Statue of Liberty or if I say broccoli, you get those images. Yeah. So the images are powerful and that's why you need to have images. So I can look at this and I can say, well, for example, someone said we need to have more women in this field, right? Yeah. We need to have more women in most fields. That's what I hear at conferences. Yeah. There was also, we need to have more students. Recruitment and succession is a really big challenge for a lot of fields. Mm -hmm. But also I think the field of nuclear has a really big challenge because Four days ago, I knew nothing about nuclear. Yeah. And I think most people out there know nothing about nuclear. 
and I was talking to some of the students, asking them, so why did you want to study nuclear? Mm -hmm. And they said, most of them said it was by chance, right? Right. So I think there's a huge potential to talk about nuclear. So right. this is a viable solution as to me. So I'm, I'm like transformed, you yeah. know? I'm well, that's, really that's great to hear because you are really, you know, part of the public that we are trying to like talk to, attract, inform, mm. have these educated discussions and then let the public make their own opinion, you know? So exactly. it's interesting how you kind of absorbed all of this information and now you're processing and you're forming your own opinions. So mm. that's great. And for us, you know, coming from a scientific engineering field, it's great to have you because that was something very unique. Mm. I have been to many conferences. I've never seen this before. So it is super interesting. And I think it's mm. like a new, nice visual addition, as you say, that comes in the industry and can also be more interesting for the younger generations and much more attractive, you know, to see basically a visual talk, like 15 minute talk in a drawing, mm. in like a doodle. Mm. So that's, that's very good. We are super happy to have you here. I want to ask, do you have some criticism for us? Like what could be done better? Or do you have some comment that you were thinking throughout the conference that mm, maybe if that was different, it would be better? Well, a spontaneous thought was, uh, I think the field of nuclear needs to talk much more right. in simple terms and explain to the public what it is and the potential within this because this is only like it's not only for nuclear scientists right there's like we heard today there's a huge demand of people in in all kinds of levels right so there is a big market opportunity yeah. and not even uh, locally in sweden but like on a global scale yeah. uh, but also for sweden it's attractive so one and the other I need to. I think you need to see more politicians here. Yeah. Because they are the ones sort of shaping the way and of making the decisions. Making yeah. the decisions, and if they don't understand it, which they rarely do, not only to nuclear, then you don't get them on board. Yeah. So I think there is a big uh, interest uh, to talk to the schools and the industry and the politicians. Yeah. So it's nice to have the basically scientific talks, but it's also important to engage both the publics and the politics. Yeah. In it. So society, politics and nuclear come hand in hand basically yeah. pretty much everywhere. Maybe not at the same conference yeah. because some of the talks, like for me listening here, it was really difficult because I know nothing about yeah. nuclear. Some of the talks were extremely difficult to understand what it is they were saying and how do I transform that into an image. But it's not only about the data, it's about the message yes. and it's about people. Yeah. And the message that was sent here from my perspective is that nuclear is an interesting solution, nuclear is safe and there's a big potential mm. within it. So. That's great. That's great to hear. Thank you so much. Thank it you. Was great it was a pleasure to here. meet you. Thanks. All Thanks right. a lot. Anymore.